Math Day 102 with Grandma. We're going to finish up our book, Problem Solving with Greg Tan, Masterpieces. Time Warp. The Persistence of Memory, 1931, by Salvador Dali. Is it a dream or is it real? It's hard to know when art's surreal. Dolly's clocks weren't so precise. Now they're melting just like ice. Find seven ways to make an eight. Group the clocks. It's getting late. Four and two and three and one and three and two. Well, four is half of eight. So we need to find another couple ways to make four. 2 plus 2 would be 4, so 4 plus 2 plus 2 is 8, and 3 plus 1 is 4, so 1 plus 3 plus 4 is 8, and 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 3 plus 1 is 4, and 2 plus 2 would be 8. Lots of ways, great ways to make 8. Drip Dry. Number one, 1950, Lavender Mist by Jackson Pollock. A Jackson Pollock makes you think, did someone spill a jar of ink? But look again and you may find beauty of a different kind. Nines are made with all these splatters. Finding seven is what matters. Okay, I Four and two and two and three and one and three. Four plus three is seven. And two plus two is four. Plus three is seven. And three plus three plus one would be seven. And four plus one is five. Plus two is seven. And two plus two. Okay. Three plus three is six plus one is seven. Drip dry. Soups up. Campbell's Soup Can Tomato, 1968 by Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol strove to make art for all the masses' sake. Campbell's Cokes and Miss Monroe, though these are some that you may know. Can you make ten with cans of soup? Find all ten's ways to form a group. Five and four and four and two and five and three and one. Five plus five is ten. Five plus... 4 plus 1 would be 10. 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2 would be 10. 5 plus 3 plus 2 would be 10. 4 plus 1 would be 5 plus 5 would be 10. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 plus 1 would be 10. And 5 plus 5 and 5 plus and two lots of ways to make ten. Greg Tan's masterpieces. <clears throat> this is Grandma's last math book in the house. We've read so many math books. We've done math for 102 days, and April 12th is the 102nd day of 2023. But on top of reading one whole book, we've read lots of parts of books. We had about 10 or 15 other books, so we've read nearly 120 books. 112 to 115, somewhere in there. I'll have to go back and check. But this is our last math book. The Multiplying Menace Divides by Pam Calvert, illustrated by Wayne Gehan, A Math Adventure. The Multiplying Menace Divides. So is that Peter again? I have to find out. Zero! Prince Peter yelled. 
but there was no sign of his dog or the multiplying stick that Zero had dug up earlier in the morning. He tried not to think about what would happen if the enchanted stick fell into evil hands again. As Peter passed a farm, he noticed ten cows and five froggy cows gazing in the field. One froggy cow stopped chewing its cud and mooed a ribbity moo. What is the farmer feeding them? Peter wondered. When he neared a town, the lady ran past him screaming, Two of my children are frogs! And Peter stared at two child-sized frogs hopped around the woman and six children. No, it couldn't be. He's been banished, he said to himself. Still, he headed back to the castle to tell his father, the king, about the strange frog sightings. Peter greeted the twelve knights who guarded the castle gate. Suddenly, the ground shook and flash! Four frogs in shiny armor appeared where knights had once stood. Has Rumpelstiltskin returned, Peter asked himself. He would never forget how Rumpelstiltskin had wrecked havoc on the kingdom with the multiplying stick. Heart pounding, he bolted to the throne room. The queen sat crying with a large frog on her lap. Where is father, Peter? Had. He's a frog again. Again? Yes, when he was a prince, a witch named Matilda turned him into a frog. A princess broke the spell with a kiss. I tried, but kissing him won't work this time. Wait, the princess kissed father. Uh, once upon a time before he met me. That's another story. Oh, so this isn't Rumpelstiltskin's mischief? No, your father's twelve advisors are searching for Matilda now, the queen said, walking onto the balcony. Father has twenty-four advisors. What happened to the other twelve? They're frogs, too, said his mother. Peter gasped. With the magic multiplying stick, if 24 advisors were multiplied by one half, then 12 would be left and the other 12 would disappear. Except this time, frogs were part of the equation. How could people be reduced to frogs? Was this some sort of diabolical amphibian division? Something had to be done. Peter headed for the royal swamp, but all he found there were ordinary frogs. Just as he was about to give up, Peter heard a familiar cackle from a nearby cave. He tiptoed towards it. Listen, Matilda, you frog crystals, creating more chaos than the Great Divide could do on its own, Rumpelstiltskin said. Soon we'll divide the whole kingdom into frogs, the witch screeched. Divide? But how? Peter wondered. His eyes widened as he spied Rumpelstiltskin gazing into a glowing green stone. There was a stick in Rumpelstiltskin's hand, but the symbol at the end wasn't an X. It was a line between two dots. Then we'll have our revenge on the king and his meddlesome son for getting us trapped in the abyss of zero, Rumpelstiltskin cackled. Who would have thought that your old algebra lessons would help rescue us from that awful place, Matilda said. Wait until I get my hands on that prince. I'll teach him a lesson. Rumpel, you promised him to me. Frog princes are all the rage, according to Insty magazine. She thrust the pages under his nose. Eating them is good for your skin, not to mention delicious. Never fear, Matilda, you'll have your prince. Now, in a flash, Rumpelstiltskin appeared behind Peter and pushed him towards Matilda. Let me go, Peter cried. Oh, he's a feisty one, just like his father is, Matilda cried, licking her lips. I have a special recipe in mind for him, Rumpelstiltskin laughed. First, I need something from the boy. He's mine, Matilda howled. I have a craving for frog prince stew. Matilda, he has the great multiplier. When it's combined with the great divide, you can have anything you want. We'll have unlimited math power. Then Rumpelstiltskin grumbled, and I'll let you use it first. Divine, Matilda cackled, turning to Peter. Tell us where the great multiplier is. Never, Peter yelled. Maybe this will change your mind. Rumpelstiltskin waved the great divide near the, over the frog crystal. It cast an image of Zero sniffing trash in an alley near the castle. Dog divided by one. Instantly, Zero morphed into a frog dog. Change him back, Peter cried. 
Give me the great multiplier and I will, Rumpelstiltskin said. Can't you find it with your crystal, Peter asked. The crystal could only see living things, Deering the Tomb said. I'm a witch, not a miracle worker. Like ribboning cows happening every day, Peter mentioned. Like riveting cows happen every day, Peter muttered to himself, thinking quickly, he said aloud, I need your help to find the alley where my dog is. Only Zero knows where the multiplier is buried. He hoped his ruse worked. He knew where the alley was, but needed a chance to get the Great Divide away from Rumpelstiltskin. Very well, said Rumpelstiltskin, securing the frog crystal at the end of the divided sack. Well, one of those move and I'll make you croak forever, Matilda cackled. Rumpel, you're a hoot. As Peter followed the divvy, devious duo, Rumpelstiltskin continued his reign of chaos. Butcher and wife divided by two, he yelled. Suddenly the wife turned to her large frog wife and croaked loudly at her stunned husband. He does know what number to divide by. How does he know what number to divide by, Peter wondered. Then they came upon a little girl playing with twelve kittens. Kittens divided by three, Rumpelstiltskin said, and four of the twelve became froggy kittens. Watching the mewing kittens and their croaking siblings squirm together into smaller groups, Peter thought, yes, twelve kittens can be divided into three sets of four. Rumpelstiltskin is dividing people and animals into groups, and one group is turning into frogs. As they neared town, Rumpelstiltskin pointed the great divide at a stable boy who was leading a horse to a stall. Rumpel, I want to turn, Matilda whined. You don't know how to use it, Rumpelstiltskin said. Matilda grabbed a stick. How hard, how hard can it be? See that horse? Watch, she pointed the great divided. Horse divided by one-fourth. Instantly, four small froggy horses leaped into the fr at the frightened stable boy. Peter scratched his head. Why did dividing by a fraction produce more froggy horses rather than fewer? Then he noticed the froggy horses were about one-fourth or one-quarter the size of the original horse. It was as if one horse had been divided into four quarter horses. Give the wand back, Rumpelstiltskin lunged at Matilda. She jumped out of the way, chiming, This is fun, pointing the stick at two piglets, she incanted. Piglets divided by one-fifth. Ten teeny frog piglets ribbity oinked. Matilda stared at them and drooled. All these frogs are making me hungry. Taking advantage of the moment, Rumpelstiltskin yanked the frog crystal from the stick. Enough with the frogs, he yelled. Matilda screamed and threw aside the great divide and tackled Rumpelstiltskin. As they fought, Peter grabbed the stick and escaped. Peter ran to the alley where he'd seen Zero in the crystal. Zero whimpered a ribbity wolf. Can you show me where you buried the multiplying stick, Peter asked Zero. Zero ribbited three times and hopped away. Zero led Peter to one of his favorite burying spots. There were 15 covered holes. Zero, with the great divide, I can reduce the number of holes and find the great multiplier before Rumpelstiltskin and Matilda find us, Peter said. Peter counted five rolls of holes in groups of three. I could divide 15 by five to get three holes or wait. Peter aimed the great divide and said, holes divided by 15 and one hole remained. All at once, Rumpelstiltskin and Matilda appeared. They wrestled the great divide from Peter. Thought you could get away. Where's the great multiplier? In that hole. Quickly, Rumpelstiltskin dug out the multiplier. Now I'll change zero back as you promised, Peter insisted. Not yet. With the symbols at opposite ends, Rumpelstiltskin connected the great multiplier to the great divide. Fire crackled along the stick, causing Rumpelstiltskin to drop it. When the smoke cleared, a shimmering gold staff remained. Now I've complete operational power, Rumpelstiltskin yelled as he reattached the frog crystal to the staff stick. Sorry. Matilda grabbed the staff from Rumpelstiltskin's hand. Are you mad, Rumpelstiltskin bellowed. You don't know how to use the great staff of the proud quo. One bad equation could destroy the staff along with all our magic. You promised I could use it first, Matilda shrieked. Yes, but I didn't mean it, Rumpelstiltskin mumbled. Rumpel, it's time for us to divide the entire kingdom into frogs as we planned, Matilda said carefully. Peter's heart lurched. How could he stop Rumpel, Stiltskin, and Matilda? Then suddenly Zero began hopping around Matilda, flicking his tongue at the stick. 
Get Zero away from me, Matilda yelled, swinging the staff at the dog. I will not be deterred from my division quest. Zero, Peter called, and then a thought occurred to him. Would dividing someone by zero send them back to the abyss of zero? After all, multiplying zero had worked to banish Rumpelstiltskin. Peter thought some more. Division divides things into groups or pieces, but how could a whole number be divided into groups of zero? The equation would make no sense. Was that what Rumpelstiltskin meant by a bad equation? Maybe it would destroy the staff. Peter decided it was worth it. Matilda, quick, divide Rumpelstiltskin by zero. Then you'll have the staff all to yourself. It's a trick, Rumpelstiltskin cried, trying to get past Zero to Matilda. A wicked smile stepped over, swept over the rich's face. Good try, but I need Rumpel around. Besides, I have a better idea. She pointed the staff at Peter's dog. Zero divided by... No, Peter yelled, reaching out to Zero. You can't, Rumpelstiltskin screamed as he grabbed for the staff. But it was too late. Zero, cried Matilda. The staff exploded, bursting the frog crystal into a shower of green sparks. Zero instantly turned back into a dog. The magic was vanquished. But when the green sparks hit Rumpelstiltskin and Matilda, the two friends turned into frogs and hopped away. We did it, Zero, Peter cried. Everyone celebrated the feat of Rumpelstiltskin and Matilda. Peter's parents honored him at a great math magician and encouraged him to learn more feats of arithmetic magic. They also awarded Zero a burying area all his own. As for Rumpelstiltskin and Matilda, they were swamped with problems that would keep them intensely busy. The Multiplying Manus Divide.